Hello, I'm Ave. Hey guys, I'm George, and uh, we have a good topic about to talk about today, right? Yes, we do. Interesting stuff. So plant a seat, get a snack, and listen in. Or take a ride. So today we're going to be talking about a very, very profound topic. It's about the seven heavens. And we did want to do this topic for a while now, actually, right? Yes, we have. And mm, interesting stuff that we're going to talk about. Oh, yes. You know, um, I do recall, actually, when I was thinking of doing this topic, I recall actually watching uh, a really cool science show. It was called Through the Wormhole. And if anybody wants to see that show, you can probably find it on YouTube somewhere. Highly recommend it because all the episodes on the show are very thought-provoking. That's with Mr. Friedman, right? Morgan Friedman, that's correct. Yes, that guy's got an awesome voice. Oh, <laughs> yes. I guess I should take a couple of tips from him, right? Oh, yes. No, Maybe. What should. do you think, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Leave us a comment, please, if you like my monotone or not. And um, what I did like about the show is how it opened up because that was actually what prompted me to think of uh, this particular topic that we're talking about. The show asked a, a very interesting question. Is man created by God or was God created by man? Say that again. Is man created by God or God was created by man? Oh, I think we were created by God. Well, I would think so too, but you know how they kind of create those thought-provoking questions. And what was actually interesting is the conclusion they drew. The conclusion was rather interesting on the fact that they said that maybe, maybe, when you search for God, don't search for Him out there. Search for God from within. Mm -hmm. That was what actually was profound because it's almost like a science coming to that conclusion. They didn't come from any mystical perspective. Well, then who made man? Who made man? We're, we're too perfect. Everything is just too perfect. Like our water, our air, the sun, everything's just too perfect. It could not happen by chance. Definitely not. Uh... I guess the best way to answer it would be an experiment that they did. And that was what? That was when they actually hooked up people to these machines that measure brain activity. People that are into meditation, spirituality, God-fearing spiritual people. And they wanted to measure the brain activity, what was going on. And what they found was rather profound because um, the functions on, of the brain that would be activated as if you're having an external conversation were measured with high activity. Very interesting. Very, because they were in the meditative state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They did the same experiment with atheists. But same results? No, different. How was that? There was just no specific spikes, nothing that stood out. Really? Which, that's what makes me think, why did they come up with that conclusion? It's as if, first of all, the atheists disconnected. Mm -hmm. That was what they showed. But... Disconnected spiritually. Spir they're totally disconnected from God. Right. Totally. They don't believe. Don't believe. That's right. So that part of their brain was dead. Was dead. Literally nothing. So they were meditating and doing the same thing as those that were believers and very much into spirituality. And that's when they came up with a conclusion because they didn't have an external conversation. Those people that were hooked up to the machines and being in a spiritual front, their internal conversation was the same as the external conversation. The same brain mechanisms, what's it called, uh, were measured. Right. Which something very real was happening. Something extremely real. Okay. So what... <laughs> Do you think the real thing is, is that one of the seventh heavens that maybe they stepped a foot in? Or, or, or at least on the, on the ladder. Mm -hmm. At least they touched upon the ladder where to go. Because they knew 
what's it called what points to touch and that's why the narrator came up with that conclusion maybe the search for God need to start from within not from without which could be why atheists don't believe in God because they just look around where is it where is it you know they're kind of trying to scientifically rationalize it but mm -hmm. here you have prove science. it prove it prove, prove it. it yeah right they want proof but here you actually have science proving the first step to divinity go inside mm-hmm that's what I actually found very interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. Now, what even more interesting was that from the uh, mystical point of view, we talk about the meditators, the seekers uh, from ancient times. Let's go back all the way to Bible times. They always knew that. For them, that was like a natural act, natural behavior. And... natural behavior natural behavior for That's, them that was like a natural way of life well yeah and isn't it sad that it's not a natural way of life now it's like i don't know people kind of like oh frowned upon kind of thing now right like you hear people oh well i meditate and you get a look <laughs> yeah you, you get a look right yeah, it's like so, you're the odd man out kind yes of thing. which is sad because mm. it's odd that you don't mm -hmm. when it's supposed to that's where you find God, like you said, the inner. The inner. Meditation. And, and I tell you, I do highly recommend anybody watch that show. Because in one of their other episodes, they actually touch upon the sixth sense. Which, for science, it's amazing when they actually go into that domain and they prove it. You know? And why I started with Through the Wormhole? Because the scientific nature of the show... In my humble opinion, and again, um, just for you viewers, I've been with the art, and I do call it art of spirituality, meditation, and seeking God for many, many years now. And when you approach what's called uh, higher states of mind from a mystical perspective and explore the, those dimensions of reality, and you come from the direction of science, from in, what's it called, that's when it becomes profound. Because to get there, you have to talk not about physics, you have to talk about the metaphysics. Why? Because through metaphysics, you can scientifically prove divinity, higher domains. And how have they proved that? Is that with that science project that you were talking about, um, about the people meditating? Yes, that's one of them when they talk about the sixth so sense. So they, they think that is a proof that there is... The closest step science can actually come because the conclusion was, remember, again, you have to look at God from within excellent conclusion so maybe they would come short of saying yeah there is a god but at least they nail the first step go inside you to find it mm -hmm. which to me that was great to me that was something well it also makes sense because i mean your spirit is inside of you so true right so true so if you're looking for that god well you first find the spirit within you and that will lead you to your god that is correct and I say to your God, because for me, all religion that has a God, it's all the same God. Mm -hmm. It is the same God. So I say yours is because everybody has their own idea about God. Very true. They do. From the Buddhas mm -hmm. to the Jesuses. Mm -hmm. And I'm emphasizing Buddha and Jesus because these are the religions that actually worship a being. Now, the Buddha himself never said, I am God, obviously. Neither did Jesus. Neither did Jesus. We have to point the fact out. But the people deify them only because that was their way to get to divinity, which is fine. And you know what? Both of them made statements is that you can do what I can do. Exactly. That is true. You could they do. both said. So if you want to walk on water, mm -hmm. you could. You could. You could. And You'd have to practice very hard and very long at it. but Yeah, the science is there. It is there pure 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 consciousness mm -hmm. that's the key now the materials you know about the seven heavens as the example that we're using here and like all oh, mystical materials about chakras right higher realms higher domains and again if we're gonna be talking science let's call them dimensions higher dimensions of reality within this planet other planets all these mystics that put it put it down in paper on books in whatever material they use we do have to point out that they all had what we would call today's language extraterrestrial experience extraterrestrial experience call it angels um whatever aliens 
I think I like calling them messengers now because that was the original name for them anyways. Yeah. And isn't it true that in, in there's a couple of cultures that the name actually comes out to messenger? Yes, that's actually very much true. Uh, in Joel, uh, in Hebrew, for example, Malach, Malach means a messenger. In Greek, uh, Anglos, also, same, uh, same idea. Messenger. A messenger. Yep. Yeah, I guess we just anglicize the word and we call them an angel from Anglos. Or aliens, now, now mm -hmm. we call them aliens. Now we call them aliens. Back in the old days, we used to call them angels. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, I guess the point where we kind of try to go with this conversation is to not to make anybody believe anything. I mean, we're just talking from knowledge that not just comes from books. We meditate a lot and we kind of understand this knowledge holistically. So it's not that to get anybody to believe anything, but think about this. Life that we know doesn't necessarily have to be carbon-based life form. It could be any kind of material structure, whether we understand it or not. Meaning? Meaning. I mean, just because we see life within a certain context, does that mean life does not exist with, within other contexts? We are carbon-based. Could there be a silicon-based life form? Oh, sure. I mean, like, if you think about it, um, look at fish. Fish would be a good example. You know, like, a fish doesn't know there's anything outside the water until you take the fish out of the water. <laughs> yeah. And then it goes into another dimension according to how, uh, how the fish sees things. Well... Honestly, for the fish, it is a different dimension. Yeah, because he only sees in a two-dimensional reality. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Now you put this fish back into the water, mm -hmm. and he goes and tells his friends that there's more after that. And mm -hmm. what do they say? You're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> just, no, man, I just had an alien abducted me. You know, I just had a UFO experience today. <laughs> you know? So, you know, actually, that's a rather a very interesting example. You Well, you think about it. For us... There is a certain spectrum of light that we see and we mm -hmm. don't see, right? Mm -hmm. We do see, uh, I mean, this is actually even according to science, that we see beneath the ultraviolet and above the infrared. That we see beneath the ultraviolet and above the infrared. But what, what is above and what is below when you actually deal with reality that we have no base to compare what's above, what's below? And how do we see beyond the infrared? Same example as the fish. Beyond mm -hmm. them, for we don't see, we're blind to it. Mm -hmm. But doesn't mean something does not exist. Not over there. all are blind to it. There's a lot of people, like you know, even now, like there's more of us. So there's more of us who see things. And now we have the internet, <laughs> so people could talk about it, like shadow people. Mm, yes, from okay? their realm. I'm sorry, but there's. I believe in those things. There's just. I've seen. I've seen things on, on the video that are, oh my God, that's what I saw. You know what I mean? And people are capturing these mm. things on video. Now, the thing that freaks me out a little bit about them is that uh, this, they seem to be getting physical. I've seen one video mm. with some guy being dragged down the hall. Now, I don't know if that was a hoax or if it was real, but yeah, that's concerning. <laughs> you know? It's one thing to see them and they can't touch you, but if they're touching you, that's that's a different thing altogether. So they exist outside of boundaries of light, like, you know, outside that, uh, in the ultraviolet into the infrared. They exist outside of we don't see them. But if they come into that reality, to the color spectrum that we see, maybe they have the ability to do that. Yeah, do that's they see what, us? Yes. Of course they do, they right? They do. Huh. They would, would they? Yeah, isn't that kind of a scary thought that there's so many things that walk around that we actually don't see? Mm -hmm. You know, like you could be standing in your kitchen and then all of a sudden the back of your neck, the hair grows up and you're like, ugh. Mm -hmm. Could that be something that's walking by and just like maybe touching you? You know, just in the back of your neck to make you <laughs> stand up? Like it's those things, like why would that happen? Like, you mm -hmm. know, and you get a chill. Mm-hmm. You would think that the, they would be cold. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I do, I do. They would be like air, cold air, like a breeze, I think. Like, mm -hmm. you know? That's how you would feel it. Yeah, I think that's how you would feel it. So, mm -hmm. those are another little maybes that run around in my head. What mm. if? What if, <laughs> indeed. That is actually very thought provoking and very interesting. Like, especially, like, if let's say, I mean, talk scientifically, mm -hmm. right? We have what's called the realms of uh, matter. Mm -hmm. Right, you and I, we see each other, but then we have what's called the dark matter, meaning unknown. We don't even know what it is. 
and then let's get even higher we know energy but then we know something called dark energy Right? And according to science, they don't even know what it is, at least not on the mainstream level, right? They I see a yin and yang kind of pattern mm. there, right? You mm. have your dark and <laughs> the opposites of yes. each other, right? Yeah, it's true, because actually um, mm. you're making me think about a science problem there. So again, science. Always emphasize science because I humbly believe in our time, the gateway to spirituality is science. Really? Eh? I think so. Science has progressed. It's still young and immature, but it has progressed. Look, we just discovered dark matter. Right. And dark matter, as we will be talking, we'll find out they're more like the higher realms of consciousness. But, okay, not to digress. Uh, what we were saying, you kind of got me talking about... About how it's yin thing. and yang. The yin and yang. Thank yes. you very much. So, matter, let's see, apple. Mm -hmm. Anti-matter same apple made out of a whole separate form of matter they look the same but it's a different kind of matter it's antimatter it's a mirror image okay a similar image. not the same right so that's the yin and yang the yin is different than yang but right. they coexist matter and antimatter they're best friends mm -hmm. they're kind of one into one with the Once other again the yin and the yang. yang and yang they have to one has to be with <clears> the other like for it to be what they are mm-hmm but Even if they're the opposite of each other, but not the opposite. It's like they're opposite, but they exist in harmony. Yes. Well, that's like man and woman. Yeah. We are the opposite of each other, but we get along and we, people have babies together and men and women do that kind of thing. <laughs> and we are the yin and yang. We're supposed to be the yang, so I always don't get along. Well, listen, here. women are all emotional mm. and hormonic and men are not. <laughs> like, right? No, so. they're just uh, mental. Hmm. Think with their mind. They're just mental. Logical. Well, women are logical. Emotional first. Logical second. Oh, no. I'm a little more logical first and then emotional. Are you a tomboy? I am. Okay, I get your I point. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But basically, in, in all in all, where we're going with this is that when we, come, when we talk about dark matter and uh, antimatter and dark energy, there's only so so far that science can go. It, it does have a limit, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, if, let's say, related to the prophets and their students, they actually went into those realms. They ascended to other worlds what we today would uh, consider these worlds exist within dark matter exist within dark energy and they did it through descending because they're going inside themselves to get out right mm -hmm. so they're going into their mind mm -hmm. and yes they're using the actual body okay and make a long story short they are going to the depth of consciousness to do that all right mm -hmm. now consciousness you know it's that sentience that our minds is using right that's the essence of our, our identity and it exists within the organic brain and outside the organic brain it exists within our astral bodies which are part of the mind which, so what, what are you what are you trying to say there like i'm a little confused mm -hmm. so you're saying that we're what we are right now like how i am i see this is what part of me conscious consciousness yes that's your consciousness interpretation of you right okay so you needed to break that down a little bit because i was big words and <laughs> you're the one to do it for me you're yes, the, you're the one to one. stop me and do Whoa, that for me. You. make me understand what you're saying so so then it's like this is the conscious what we see how mm -hmm. we're food we want to eat our decisions so we have to get to where the through the depth of the unconscious going inside us so then that's when you meditate and you look inside correct correct very good that's actually the case all right so it's like you always have this thing that you do to me that you kind of george don't run too far slow down come back come back and give me the whole explanation <laughs> sorry guys I tend to jump a bit ahead only because uh, I don't know I think my mind operates a bit too quick his his brains thinking faster than his mouth <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah he had to say I that. have to slow him down so that <laughs> whoosh I'm not getting what you're saying <laughs> yeah so um, 
you know, that reality that we're talking about, right, is really experienced through our astral body. And all these sensations that are not physical, they can only and only be experienced through our astral body. And to get that, you need to meditate. That is correct. Okay, because you can't do it any way else. So then when you're sitting down and you learn your mind, settle your mind, you'll be able to do this, right? You'll be able to... And that means leave your body. Yes, right? you leave the body by going inside. But yeah, otherwise you do have to detach from consciousness. Okay. So you have to detach yourself from this matrix world and go within yourself. Which is pretty cool because, I mean, my experience that I, when I, because I have started doing meditation here, um, you do have another world in your mind. Mm -hmm. It is like a universe that you're flying through because you just... It's so hard to explain. You have to actually experience it. But you don't see it like how we see now. Like with our visions, with our eyes. Yeah. It's a different kind of sight that you see in your mind. Mm -hmm. Right? So, And it's beautiful. And it's so big. It's it is really, really big. Vast. It's very vast. Yes. You're right. And unfortunately, we are blocking it out from our physical senses. You know, it's like we're out of phase for it but yet if we actually shift our mind just a little bit through meditation right mm -hmm. we can see other things in other places and other realities mm -hmm. right and um, when uh, her and I start meditating together a lot that's when you're that's where you get those experience right yes. was it like almost second nature for you would you say I, w I would say yes because um I've been, uh, well, because I dabbled here and there. Mm -hmm. I went to some seminars uh, to do some meditations because, you know, once again, um, I will say this, that there's nowhere on um, the Internet or YouTube that you can actually sit down and they give you step by step what to really do, what to really focus. Like, so when I went to this one seminar, she was actually pretty good. It was my first real experience of um getting to a level and ever since then i just i want to do it more mm -hmm. you you just the freedom that you feel when i came back to reality mm -hmm. um how awake your mind is it's like you're almost like a child again <laughs> that energy in your brain is like a kid you feel young your brain feels so light mm -hmm. is because you when you meditate you're actually getting rid of a lot of the negativity you, you do actually feel lighter afterwards yeah. I wish they could do a science project on that <laughs> you know because honestly you do feel lighter I'm actually amazed I was one of these people who were like okay I'll give it a try and I didn't honestly think anything would happen or mm -hmm. me have any kind of experience like you know like I was blown away. Uh, it didn't change my life, and I want more of that feeling. And mm -hmm. the only way that you can do it is meditation. And it, as you know, for me, I had to meditate in slow, small doses. I would do five minutes, and after mm -hmm. a while, it was ten minutes. I mean, and I was stuck at the ten-minute mark to meditate for a good two, three weeks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. But you just keep plugging at it and you keep going. Like now I can do 45 minutes. Yeah, we've done 45 minutes actually even today, by the way. That's right. We did it uh, today, 45 minutes. So it takes, it's slow. But once, it's like riding a bike. It's hard to quiet the mind mm -hmm. and try to think of nothing. That's the hardest part is try to think of nothing. Mm -hmm. Right? But once you get a little bit of that, oh, you got the balance then you just take off and then it comes easier mm. you know it's interesting i'm just listening to the story that you're telling me right now and um you did say a few minutes ago actually that you felt like a child mm -hmm. that was uh that actually resonated with me very well because that is the opening of the root chakra we're in the tailbone the root chakra quality is innocence children have innocence they know nothing but Pureness, at the moment yes pureness join us you tickle them they will laugh you pinch them we take away something they will cry pure innocence no responsibility so the true essence to begin to meditate to understand meditation is get in touch with your innocence first wow Root you chakra. actually kind of blew me away when you said that 
it's that that's why yeah that's why i felt like a job okay exactly. that's cool that's cool that's cool so that was about the interesting story i don't remember you ever telling me this one no that was the one here at this park that, this we're, park sitting that now. we're sitting right now yes it was an outdoor one and it was um uh with a wiccan group Oh, right, right, right I remember And yes, and like I said, and after it was done, I felt like a child. My mind was just so fresh and young feeling. Mm -hmm. and I, it was just amazing. So I was, like I said, I want more. Yeah. <laughs> I want more. You say, so this whole meditation talk is actually the key, the beginning to go to seven heavens, how to enter them only through meditation so this was actually very interesting because um, when we talk about the seven heavens we do say number seven that's not a coincidence right think about it we do have seven planets seven only days to seven days of creation yes that's right and lucky uh, seven Everybody lucky has, seven yes. the expression and um, I mean yeah yeah we know we got more than seven planets however we talk about the ones that are visible to the eye mm-hmm okay and yeah there is definitely a relationship between planets and angels just so we know and whatever that is we'll get into another time because that's really it's going to take us to a whole other direction so. that's if you guys want to know it's actually pretty interesting <laughs> so let us know in the comments oh thank you very much please do please do thanks for reminding me yes guys comment if you want to know more about seven heavens or any things that we did not cover in this podcast please let us know or if something intrigued your interest that mm -hmm. we were saying mm -hmm. let us know yep so we did say we have a relationship between the planets and uh the seven planets and the seven heavens and we also have a relationship between those seven heavens and other dimensions so let me just explain to you what i mean when i say seven heavens and other dimensions the way i understand it let's say mars mars is a very populated planet with real live martians but so they say so they say <laughs> so they say but some people say nothing but some other, people say but nothing. once again it will go back to we can't see them correct which is true because with our current science we have telescopes we can even map the surface of mars there's nothing there we don't see it right it's a desolate but who's to say that the mars that we see is the only mars there is what do you mean ah so the way I understand it is like this. Mars is very much populated place right now, but it sort of exists slightly out of phase, like slightly altered dimensional plane in a slightly altered that we cannot see. So let's say those Martians, they can be looking at Earth and there's nothing there for them. It's so desolate. So they would see the same thing we do? Yeah, we look at Mars, there's nothing there. It's like we look at one another, but we just don't see each other. Mm -hmm. It's almost slightly out of phase, right? That's like a, like an ant. It cannot see us. <laughs> no, it it's cannot out of see phase. It. Yes, it cannot see us. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like we're looking at one another, but uh, we don't see one another, right? And really, you know, the same would go. I would, I'm going to go on a limb and say with other planets. Yeah, there's life over there. But if we can map or send probes, we don't see anything. What if they're just slightly out of phase, like in a whole other dimensional plane within, I mean, locally, mm -hmm. native to that other planet? Make sense? Well, wasn't it um, uh, that that rover that's on Mars now? Mm -hmm. um, there was this uh, one thing I saw on the Internet that, um, uh, that it caught something and it actually moved the camera or something yeah i know what you're talking about yeah you know they try to spin it off it's like equipment move or something but yes. yeah it look, didn't look like a man it looks sort a of like a, um i would say you know one of those shadow people but mm -hmm. not dark mm -hmm. he was that um mm -hmm. sort of like the haze off of a hot summer day mm -hmm. on the rose mm -hmm. that you know that kind of hazy he was kind of made in that right mm -hmm. but more of a outline to it yes mm-hmm I do recall seeing, I think we did, I did see the same, uh, Yes. there's a YouTube video on that. Yes, there is. I know. So it made me kind of wonder, like, um, see, we, we're actually not seeing it because the thing actually attacked it. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, it, it moved, yeah. It That's moved right. it, it, it went over it, and yeah. attacked it. So we don't know if it was running over one of its own people and maybe that's why it did that. <laughs> Who knows? Or maybe it was coming too close to a den. Oh, that was the Transformers. Remember the Transformers? They saw that Robin and stepped on it. 
in the movie The Transformers? Mm -hmm. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I do actually I do recall something like that. That's why I said. I know. I kind of went off a bit. Yes. Yes. It is. Yeah. So it was. Uh, I just can relate to the movie The Transformers. The step on the going back to what I was saying. Um, what you're saying. We don't see if we don't see certain things already. Mm -hmm. What makes you think that we're going to see what's living on Mars? Our eyes are just not equipped to see that level of whatever they are yeah. right so and who knows maybe they don't have green like us but they're who knows they i i still yeah it, it's like what i'm thinking out of phase with our view sight or maybe like we said outside that infrared ultraviolet uh exactly. spectrum that that's we why see. we can't see them because they're in that light mm -hmm. there or they're made of that kind of light mm -hmm. so we would not be able to see them mm-hmm mm -hmm. could be yeah very good you know there's a, a group of these entities the not of this earth they do have a job their job is to actually to be observers, monitors, guides. And you know, when they function as guardians, so that, you know, when we say the forces of energy in nature, you know, there's this group of uh, angels, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we can call them the guardians or whatever, the monitor, they guide us. And they actually have a function. Their function is to serve, not just serve as guardians, but have to use that forces, the energies of nature, of the universe. So make sure that the universe operates the way it has to. Let's call them the factory workers, the fabric, behind the fabric of creation. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I believe they're the ones in control of these uh, higher dimensional planes. Mm -hmm. um, they're the ones that live in those higher dimensional planes. And they're way above us. The example I gave with the fish. Mm -hmm. You know, the fish, to uh, to the fish, we are the, these type of angels, the gods. Well, look, look, look what happened to Randy when he got pulled out. Oh, out uh, the, the, I'm going to call this a lake, and he got pulled out of the lake oh. up into that spe um, spaceship. Is Travis? it Randy or Travis? Travis. 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 Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, Randy. I don't know yeah, anybody. Yep, no, I don't know why I said Randy, <laughs> but yeah, Travis. Mm -hmm. So, uh, actually, actually, just to let you know, guys... Um, the concept of seven heavens, why well, we chose to talk about it, because it's uh, not just in our Western esoteric system, even in the Eastern systems. They have that. They actually have all these uh, same kind of literature that we have. Um, like, we, you know, we have Enochian literature of ascent into the seven heavens. And within the Eastern cultures, they have it too. So that was a perfect uh, subject for us to, to choose. Meaning, what? Do you, I'm sorry. I just like the holistic subject, you know, the dynamic, because it's like you see similar uh, stories, topics from different cultures they that all, are the same. That are the same. Yes. So I guess that's why one of the reasons why I picked it. And um, oh, so then the seventh heaven is in a lot of other cultures. Oh yeah, Greek uh, mysticism, uh, Hindu, Buddhist. Hindus and Buddhists have the most literature about nice. seven heavens. Really? Hey. Yeah, they do actually very elaborate just like what we have here right. you know we do know stories about Elijah that was taken up Enoch Ezekiel taken up right yeah. and we did say that they Enoch had, is my favorite yes Enoch is my favorite yeah that I know so we know that we're taking up to these higher dimensional planes mm -hmm. and if they had a uh, extraterrestrial experience mm -hmm. could it be that they were taken by spaceships oh I think they were <laughs> mm -hmm. maybe they were you know <coughs> But one thing we do have to note, we know what a spaceship is, right? We see it in Star Wars, TV shows like Star Wars, right? Yes. But how do we know what is real? How do we know that? Because we're dealing with reality outside our context of understanding, outside our frame well, of reference. what part are we talking about what is real? Yeah, that's a good like, question. Like, what? Like, was Enoch real? <laughs> I believe Enoch was very real. Uh, I guess the part of the extraterrestrial experience, the what took them what we see i mean some people think they were taken by a horse on carriages the bible describes them and others say no no i truly fire. i truly believe it's whatever um a person can accept it's just like um what the bleep in that mm -hmm. movie when when the native american native was on the beach with uh the actress mm -hmm. and he could not see the boats or she could not see the boats 
he could see the boats, but she could not because they'd never seen boats before. Oh, right. So interesting. With the, with the outside the frame of reference. Okay, continue. That's right. And continue. it was like he hit her third eye, <laughs> and then she saw the boat. Uh-huh. So I think that is... I think that's why people saw different things. It's whatever, because they've never seen anything like that, so their brain is trying to actually wrap around what they're actually seeing. So they describe it in whatever their brain is allowing them mm -hmm, to, to see, see. Yeah, right? Yeah. And how to see it so the brain won't explode by going crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> because, you know, fear does that to people. Mm -hmm. Actually, right? that's, so, that's a good point. I mean, we also think that those aliens, they need like spaceships to fly, yes. something mechanical, that they're very corporeal, meaning like they're very physical, right. etc. Right? right? But um, are they so primitive that they actually need to take their environment and bring it here? Do you know what I mean? Through some mechanical devices? You know what I mean? They can be so primitive. You know what I mean? I mean, let's say they have astral bodies. We have astral bodies. They have astral bodies. Right. Do they need like these spaceships to come here? Um, I'm going to say yes. Maybe that's their protective thing. Like, I mean, we have cars to take us places. We can walk, but we take cars. So Extension. Like an you know, extension to us to get how about if, if they're if they are coming like we we already know like even with our own um, spaceships going to the moon or whatever they need to have some because when they're coming in here you could burn up so maybe they need that that okay. vessel so that they can get into this dimension could be so that but still the astral plane coming to all, all life forms we can all meet on the astral form. But if they do yeah, come, but not everybody practices. So how are they going to? My guess you know, that they are so much more advanced than us. They had to. Know. But if they want to have um, a relationship with us, mm -hmm. right? First of all, we have to accept them. So what an easier way! If they just formed in front of us, people would die of heart attacks. People would kill their people, like because of that that radio thing that happened. You know. Um, I think for them, maybe they come that way so it's more acceptable because people have talked about them. Like, honestly, mm -hmm. from, like, even famous paintings, there's UFOs in them. Yeah, they do show them. Yeah, right? Michelangelo. So, that's right, Michelangelo. And right? uh, didn't Leonardo da Vinci actually paint? Yes, he did. That's right. Yes, he did as well. And there was always, um, I think, one or two. I, don't, I can't even remember, but... Mirror, hmm. uh, pictures of UFOs <laughs> and people have been doing it for century now isn't there some cave paintings of the same thing oh, yeah. now don't we have on the um, Egyptian walls Egyptian walls they do yeah. they have UFOs so mm -hmm. they've had UFOs forever I mm -hmm. think it could be their kind of vehicle that's it but that's, that's where my, my mind is thinking they don't need mechanical vehicle it could be and I'm just I guess going to jump on a limb here vehicle power to extend our consciousness to manifest here to come here it's almost maybe like a boost to their astral body to go through dimensional realms i'm yeah. just kind of going on the limb because it's like you're thinking they don't need to recreate an environment to bring a, in a mechanical saucer well so i think honestly be. they do it just because it's more yeah. visual acceptance for humans yes right yes so i just think that they have to give us that visual because once again if they come floating out of the out of the sky a lot of people would lose it so <laughs> look how people will accept more so that it's a flying saucer now oh right? yeah oh yeah there's oh, a yeah. flying it's saucer mainstream. okay see that's the first step oh there's the flying saucer oh i see the flying saucer right what's the next step mm. i saw one land the third one. Oh my goodness mm -hmm. i actually met them yeah <laughs> right <laughs> So they now that we live in this kind of day and age that every there's a lot of people out there who do believe mm -hmm. they're gonna they're definitely gonna come. Mm -hmm. We'll help the ones that don't believe to accept. Yep. So in that respect, they are limited to what they can do, and they do need that extra, I guess, boost, quote unquote, literal sense. Like another vehicle to come here, right. transportation device. I don't think they actually need it. I think they do it for us. 
You think so? It's an interesting thought. I didn't put it that way. I was actually more like, are they, are they vehicles of consciousness that bring them there? But maybe, just maybe, those vehicles will not be seen by us, will not be interpreted by us. Or well, we can't see them. Yeah. So they actually materialize using those vehicles as a uh, materialization form. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the case, they still need a transportation device. So, oh, that's your concern. That's is why. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, we're kind of postulating all these aliens, right? Well, see, that's why I don't think they're angels. Uh, I always go by that notion, angels, extraterrestrials. One and the I same. I think that, well, you know, yeah. Yah made a lot of creatures life and life forms. And honestly, I don't think they're angels if they need a vehicle. Mm. I think there are other creations that uh, Yah made. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and who knows, George, they mm. could have been like the first. Well, if they're thousands of years ahead of us, they were made first. Oh, a billion years older than us. Exactly. The way we look at time, just to clarify. Right. Mm -hmm. So for, for for them, like they've, they've been around for a very long time. We're newbies. <laughs> Compared to them, indeed. Yes, the, and you know, just like in the Star Trek, man, you can't go and just put yourself out there. I mean, I think that show from the Next Generation, the movie, mm -hmm. when Picard, there was that new life, they tried very hard, Data went there, and he showed that he was, uh, because they were, they were like us, like a thousand years ago, right? They yeah. had no technologies or anything like that, right? Mm -hmm. So... They're not supposed to interfere, but now that we're, a lot of us are aware of them being there. So I don't know, maybe you're there from all the, the seven heavens that you were talking about. I think mm -hmm. that's where these beings are from. It was made for them, for them to live there, just like how yeah. Earth was made for us to live here. Yeah, but they're acting like us are guardians, some of them. Some of well, them, because you know, we're babies. We're babies compared to them, okay. right? All what right. do you do when you find like um, a whole bunch of baby rabbits? Oh, well, you want to care for them. Exactly. You're gentle. You don't run up to them and give them heart attacks. <laughs> you have to do it slowly. Even when you finally do catch yeah. them, you have to slowly go and approach them, so that you know that's their way. Okay. Mm. Now their time is different than our time. Well, that's true as well. Right. So yeah, they've been like doing it slowly. Mm. All right. Um, you know, in the Bible, right? You have stories about the chariot, the Merkaba. Mm -hmm. So remember the Ezekiel's vision, remember Elijah's vision. We actually, if you really think about it, that, that was some form of a transportation device. Mm -hmm. Right? It was, yes. Merkaba means chariot. Right? So right. something carried them. And we know what it is We from uh, many, you know, Maybe sessions. that was the only word they had back then for it. Because there's so, word, many, right? there's so many, right? There's so many more right, words right. now than there were back have. then. That's right. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like it is mechanical in nature. But what kind of mechanical is that? Okay, you heard that? I did hear that. I didn't. I mean, it definitely caught my attention. Yeah, something like shifted back. There. <laughs> One of those weird things again. Yeah, we always have strange things whenever you and I talk about the unknown, the yes. science of the high realms. Which is very true. We talk about this kind of stuff and weird things always happen. Yeah. So, I wonder how many of you experience the same thing. We talk about it and things happen. Yeah, so just so you know guys, as uh, we're talking about the seven heavens, we talk about Merkaba, the chariot, and aliens. Something just like moved in the car. That's where we're recording this podcast from. And there's nobody but in the back seat. Nope, just us two in the front. <laughs> just us two in the front doing the show. If you like to see more videos like this, please consider supporting our work by visiting the Zen Shadows website at www.zenshadows.com. It is a rapidly growing clothing line designed by Ava and myself to enhance the meditative experience. So the seeker, the practitioner will actually embody by wearing the symbol that they're meditating upon 
on their clothes as themselves on themselves and this way the meditative process the alchemical process gets internalized and it does really work in terms of enhancing the meditation so with that being said check this out Very smoothly. My arms just slip through very easily. It's a very beautifully designed. And it's very comfortable. You can wear it anywhere. You can sleep with it. So thank you guys uh, so much for joining us here. This was a small taste of things to come. Please leave a like and subscribe to our channel and feel free to leave your comments and questions as well. We read them all. Um, best of luck, stay safe, stay connected and we'll see you guys in the next video.